let's take a look at inconsistent dependent equations um, on the HP prime by using matrices. Okay, we got a system of equations here. Let me write them down on, well, I suppose it helps if I bring my tablet up. There we go. So we've got 3x plus y plus z is equal to 2, then 4x minus y minus 2y minus 5z is equal to 1, and 6x plus 2y plus 2z is equal to 4. Double check all my numbers. Okay, that's right. Well, let's write down the matrix goes along with this. We drop our x's, y's, z's, and equals, keep the numbers in our signs. So we've got 3, 1, 1, 2, 4, negative 2, negative 5, 1, 6, 2, 2, 4. And we're going to look at this a couple of different ways on the HP prime. First off, let's go to the linear solver. So you need to be under your apps menu. Uh, if you're not here, press your apps button. Then down arrow and, and right arrow to linear solver. And press enter. And now we're going to put the numbers uh, that's in front of the variables. And basically just numbers you see in your matrix here. So do 3 enter, 1 enter, 1 enter, 2 enter, 4 enter, negative 2 enter, negative 5 enter, 1 enter, 6 enter, 2 enter, 2 enter, uh, and 4 enter. Now notice uh, what this tells us. It tells us there's a finite number of solutions. And um, we got uh, 3 times x plus 1y plus 1z is equal to 2. That comes from our first, um, first uh, equation right here. And then uh, we got uh, this negative 3.333y um, minus 6.333z equals negative 1.667. Now this is kind of a weird way to write it. Uh, we're going to look at a little bit better way um, using matrices, or at least the way that I always teach. Some books may ask you just to identify whether it has infinite solutions or not. So infinite number of solutions. If that's all they're asking, then you stop right there. Okay, let's go um, to a home. And we're going to enter this matrix in. So I'm going to do, um, let's see, Shift 4 for matrix. I'm going to clean out M1. Um, actually, I guess I could leave it uh, as is. So let me do an edit. And then I'll type in my numbers. 3 enter, 1 enter, 1, 2, 4, negative 2, <clears throat> negative 5. 1, 6, 2, 2, and 4. Double check on my numbers. Yeah, it looks right. Then I'm going to exit out, press from home. Me up arrow to clean this out. So I'll go back, get all those gone. There we go. Okay, we're going to do RRF. So I'm going to press my toolbox. Choose 7 for matrix, the number next to it. And I'll choose 3 for REF. Again, I'm choosing the number next to the REF. Now I need to tell it the matrix, the REF of what, and we put that in the M1. So I'm going to do alpha plus minus, and then 1, and then enter. Now we get decimals, we know how to handle that. Uh, we press our math button, the A, B over C, and we get this. Okay, so we got one zero negative three tenths one half zero one nineteen tenths one half and zero 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 four zeros all the way across. Okay, 
Well, I know it uh, it failed. Um, my process did not work. And the reason why I know that is when we got three equations, three variables, if we look at our first three by three square here, you should see a diagonal of one, zeros or wells. If you don't see that, it didn't work. Now, if you see the last row is all zeros, so last row is all zeros, that means that there's infinite solutions. Most books do not like it written uh, just as infinite solutions. They want you to go further. And when I say go further, they want you to put your x's, y's, z's, and equals back in. So x, y, z, and equals. So if I come up here, uh, the zero drops away. So we got 1x, which is x, minus 3 tenths z is equal to 1 half. That's our first row. Our second row, the zero x drops away. We got 1y, or y, plus 19 tenths z is equal to 1 half. Now I want to solve this for x, so I take the negative 3 tenths z over to the right side, and we get 1 half plus 3 tenths z. And on this one, I'll take the 19 tenths z over to the right side, and we get 1 half minus uh, 19 tenths z. Now typically our answer is written in point form, and you write it as x, y, and z. Well, x we know what it is. It's 1 half plus 3 tenths z, so I can plug that in. So we've got 1 half plus 3 tenths z, comma, y, which is 1 half minus 19 tenths z. And then z is just z. Typically, instead of z, they'll put another variable there, like t or s or something like that. Um, so this becomes like 1 half plus 3 tenths, and I'll put it as a t and 1 half minus 19 tenths t, and then t. And that'd be your answer. Some uh, books will refer to this as dependent equations. Um, I can put anything in for t. I put 3 here. Um, like I say, this is, this is uh, we can put whatever we want here. But once I put a 3 here, then we also have to put 3 over here, and these are dictated by whatever we put here. That's why they're dependent. Um, Let's compare that against the uh, linear solver. So I do an apps, go to linear solver. See, I got 3x plus y plus uh, z equals 2, which um, doesn't match this. And this down here, um, negative 3.3, eh, again, it still doesn't match, does it? So this, um, I, I've never seen any books that uh, are looking for it in this form. I know what they're, I know what they're indicating, um, but um, the better way to write it is what we're, what we're saying here. Let's look, take a look at our second oddball case. We'll see how the HP Prime handles it. This is the no solution case. Okay, we got x plus y minus 3z equals 4. In this case is a lot easier, no matter what uh, uh, technology you're using. 7x minus y plus 2z is equal to negative 1. And 3x plus 3y minus 9z is equal to 1. Okay, let's write down our matrix. We'll drop our x's, y's, z's, and equals, and keep the numbers in our signs. So we've got 1, 1, negative 3, 4. 7, negative 1, 2, negative 1, 3, 3, negative 9, and 1. Okay, first off, let's go to the linear solver. Press my apps. Uh, linear solver is already highlighted, so press enter on it. Then we'll put in uh, 1, 1, negative 3, 4, 7, negative 1, 2, negative 1, 3, 3, negative 9, and 1. <clears throat> Notice what it tells us. It tells us no solutions. 
Now, there is no other way to, I've never seen it written any other way in books. They'll always just write no solution. Sometimes they call it inconsistent. <clears throat> Let's show how to do it with the RAF. So I'm going to press my home. And I want to enter this matrix in. So I'm going to do uh, Shift 4 to go into the matrix. Press the Edit um, button right here. And then I'll enter these numbers. So 1, Enter, 1, Enter, negative 3, Enter, 4, Enter, 7, Enter, negative 1, Enter, 2, Enter, negative 1, Enter, 3, Enter, 3, Enter, negative 9, and 1. <clears throat> okay, let me double check all those. Okay, it looks good. I press home to exit out. Now I want to do RAF again. So I'm going to go into my matrix. Um, press my toolbox. Go into my matrix 7. Choose 3 for RAF. And then do M1. So I'll do, um, let's see, alpha plus minus, and then 1. And then press enter. We get decimals. That's okay. We know how to handle that. Uh, I press your math button. And let me write down what we have left. <coughs> One zero negative one eighth zero and then zero one negative twenty three eighths zero and then zero 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 one. Well, again, three equations, three variables. I should be able to see in my first three by three square here a diagonal of one zero zero everywhere else. Well I don't have a diagonal of ones, zero zero everywhere else, so I mean it failed. Now, specifically this one, notice my last row is all zeros. So, last row is all zeros and a single one. It'll always be a one there. I have no clue why. Um, it's never a two, never a three. Um, I think it's just the way the uh, formula comes out, the algorithm. If your last row is all zeros and a single one, then automatically your answer is no solution. So it doesn't matter whether you use linear solver or, or use a REF, you can uh, you can identify that. Well, like I say, this first one's really the only one I think the HP Prime doesn't put it in the correct format for college algebra. And uh, that's uh, solving inconsistent and dependent equations uh, using HP Prime. <laughs>